With assignment five, I'm going to set up two folders, or I have set up two folders. Uh, let me get to them here. One is, huh, there it is, the assets folder, where I have this Photoshop file that I'm working with now, which is at the resolution I want, which is eight inches at its narrowest by 150 pixels per inch, so a smaller resolution which makes it only a five megabytes basically per layer, but I'm gonna be adding so many layers that it's gonna get bigger and bigger. So I don't wanna do it at a larger resolution than that. It's a perfectly fine screen resolution. And because animations can't be printed, only shown, screen resolution is what you want. But I also have this folder for the stage. Right now the stage is empty, but the stage is where I'm going to put all of my animated frames as layers. So once I get all my assets in here, I will build a stage file that I can copy the different setups over into um, from my assets file to my stage file. And it's just like doing stop motion. There is a way to do it all in the same file, but it gets really, really confusing. So I want to try to separate that out for you so you understand the process a little bit more clearly. Now, why do I have a folder for assets instead of just this Photoshop file? Well, because every asset that's in here, this is like my treasure box of puppets, right? From the little foreground prop there, which I can then move frame by frame and have it move across, right? All of these things have different potentials. So these are kind of my, my puppet pieces my atmosphere pieces, like this texture fill, which I think I'm gonna turn off because it's a little, little strong. In fact, I might just delete it because I don't wanna have more assets than I need. I have this big ice flow. I've got texture fill back here, which could be useful because I can animate that as the bird comes in. I've got these texture fills, these texture fills, these texture fills, all different. I'm leaving them as separate assets instead of combining them intentionally because they're all on different blending modes at different opacities. And if I combine them, then that will all get changed. But also I can animate them all individually that way to really make it look more dynamic, like special effects in a stage show. And I've got this ice flow, which I can animate separate from these to kind of make it look like it's moving. That's a, a setting animation. I've got this texture fill, which is gonna be more or less permanent. So I might mark that blue. It's just going to stay put, and it will affect everything that happens behind it. But again, because it's on an overlay mode at 61%, I don't want to flatten it into anything else, because everything else needs to stay dynamic. And then I've got my dodge and overlay layers, which are just going to stay floating over everything for the same reasons. So think of it as stage lighting, all that stuff. So for these foreground props that will move, everything else is just atmosphere and lighting. Then I've got this tiny little layer here, which is the claw, this tiny li little layer here, which is the claw, I can merge these all together with the talons, to clean that up, right? But I do wanna keep those separate as an asset from the rest of my creature, because the talons are in front of the water tower, think of them as paper cutouts, and the rest of the bird, especially the tail, is behind the water tower. And I might make a separate asset, like I'll duplicate the bird, you know, without the talons. And a separate asset, I'll duplicate the talons, and I'll merge them together. So when the bird flies in, it can have the talons with it. So I'll call that the merged creature. But you see now the tail's in front. but I'll move that then behind. Very good. So that will be for coming into the frame and probably puppet warping the wings and everything. Now I do wanna make sure that that merged creature is not cropped and it's not. You see, that's what's nice about Photoshop as opposed to Pixlr or something. Even though it's off over here, I still have all the content off of my working frame. Okay.
I've got the water tower as an asset. It's supposed to be the water tower, but there's another water tower here, okay? <laughs> so it's important to label them. Doesn't look like I need this one. Then I've got the ice texture in the background, and I've got the church. Let's see if I move that. I think I want to do that, move the ice texture. Got another ice texture. I think I'm going to make all of these merge together with the background. Yeah, because I already have texture texture fills to play with, to animate. All right, so my backdrop is basically the mountains and the sky, my assets on top of that. I have the church, which I'm going to be using a lot, which kind of as a, a setting character. So let's give that a different color, make a violet. I've got the merged creature. I've got the different aspects of the creature. And then I've got lots of de different textures and pieces for the environment. So those are my internal assets. Now I have to think about my storyboard. And that's why I ask you to have your sketchbook open. Mm -hmm. And that was just assessing and kind of cleaning up and understanding. It's been a, a few days since we've worked on it. And so now I have to think about these changes. I've got the setting, I got the character to introduce, but then it, it starts to glow and there's a beam that comes out of the church. So now I need to build an internal asset. Now I could just build that, knowing what I know. I could take the church and I can make a a duplicate of it, or I can just draw, you're allowed to do that, a big beam of a big shape that kind of flows out of the church like that and fill it with yellow and make an asset that way. But because I don't have any external assets, I'm going to go ahead and search for one and just show you how I would put that in my folder. So I would do a Google image search and I want to look for a tractor beam. And I want to look for a size that's not four megapixels or anything even close, but something large enough that I could use. And maybe these are just ideas, right? So this is pretty cool. And that kind of lightning thing. It's a little bit more interesting than just yellow. That's pretty nice. And this is just like compositing it's collage. You can paint it yourself if you want. I could paint a gradation. But I like, personally, I like the, um, the variations you get from compositing. Obviously avoiding things with lots of watermarks. And then you'll see cool things like these marbled uh, zine covers. Those are just beautiful. Save those for later. It's a nice kind of custom book design. Then in my assignment five folder. Anyway. So there's this. Ooh, there's that. That's pretty cool. So I'm liking this. This is large. So I'm going to save that to the desktop. Maybe I'll use that. I like this. I'm going to save that to the desktop. I can tell already from their preview that they're good enough quality because large basically means this big. <laughs> they make a good slide and I'll save this. Okay, so these can all be different assets I can use in my animation. I can also search, though I'm probably not going to do this myself, some of you are asking, I can also search for animation. So if I say under my tools, type animated, then I can look for GIF files, or GIF files, depending on what you want. I can see what they are. And I could actually take that animation and open it in Photoshop, and it will give me all those different layers 
that I can then steal and use as assets. This is the Matrix Hebrew Bible code. Fascinating the things that are out there. Some nice animated lightning there. So these aren't really the things I'm looking for. Ooh, that's nice. So uh, we want 8 inches as your narrowest physical dimension, and then you want it at 150 pixels per inch. And that will cover for high def screens. That's kind of choppy. So you see all these kind of GIFs we can use. Got some sparkles in the background, but I don't see anything that's a really great laser beam I just have to use. I'm curious about this. Oh, very nice. So. Torch could work. Yeah, anyway, there's lots. So you, you're not limited to only compositing with still images. You can composite with animations too. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I'm going to bring in those assets. So this is the one I feel is most promising. So I'm going to bring it in above my church. Then I'm going to think, okay, it's roughly going to come from here. And then it's going to grow out like that. I'm only interested in the light effect. All right, then just like compositing, I can take my large eraser with a very soft edge. And I'm just doing this roughly. I need to rasterize it first, right? So that I can erase away from the edges. It's kind of nice if it actually darkens around it a little bit, but not this much. Take away the hard edges. Make sure my church is visible and then move it to where the church is. All right, now transform it to get rid of that Getty Images, which makes its living, like we talked about with uh, Shepherd Ferry and the Associated Press. Getty Images is another licensed uh, image company. So I need to make sure that this, if I were to profit from this animation or use it for non-educational use, I'd have to make sure that either I got permission to use it from them or I simply transformed it enough that it's not recognizable. But that glow is pretty nice. So let me erase out the watermark here. And then here's a nice trick from compositing. Take this half of it, copy it, paste it, flip it, rotate it, use it to fill in this top half and then composite it in that gives kind of a second wave which is nice i can always use clone stamp as well merge these together clone stamp on the same layer this time on the current layer very soft because we're just building animation assets and kind of fill in that blue. Okay, so that is now my church glow asset. Let's see what, what else I can do. Let's limit this black a lot more. Maybe at a slightly lower opacity. Take out that dark edge. And notice I am building my asset from the very biggest part of the beam because then I can shrink it back, you know, and have it kind of animate out. Let's see what else. Call this the tractor beam. Let's see how it looks on top of my creature. Yep, that will work. We're kind of cutting through its legs. I can thin it out a little bit up here. 